Hello, welcome to CET 4429 in this lecture on advanced topics in schema design. And what I'm going to do for this lecture is simply go over a design, uh, an actual sample design <coughs> and show how you can put all the different elements together when doing a fairly complex design of a schema. So we're looking at the data structures, how to take the relational database and make it as object-oriented as possible, and handling the different relationships in putting together a database schema. So let's start with um, some simple ideas here. Um, basic concept of data structure is that a table encapsulates an object. The object relationship of object-oriented programming and the table relationship here have a fairly simple relationship. They're one-to-one. -one. So let's take an example of a vehicle. We're going to take a, uh, make a table called automobile. And what we're going to do with the table called uh, the automobile table is we're going to create a table called automobile. We're going to set up a primary key which is numeric, called the vehicle ID, and then information about that vehicle, like make, model, color, and year, can be about any individual that, uh, automobile, will be part of that table. Now, when trying to abstract out the complexities of a database, we may actually have a database that needs something that's more generic than an automobile. Um, so in other words, we, we need to put boats, automobiles, trucks, things that are different but have common um, features into our database. And this is actually a modification to a data structure. So if we needed to do that, we can go back one step and we can create two tables. We could create a table, and we're going to use the word conveyance, this basically to represent anything that can move people from place to place. And um, the conveyance will have its own table. And then the things that are common to all of the different types of conveyance, let's say like color or year, can go in this table. And notice that the primary key is the vehicle ID. We can also create a related table that contains the information that is specific to automobiles. Notice that the primary key of this table is also vehicle ID and that it is a foreign key back to this table. What this allows us to do is to abstract this out. Now, if our database was only going to deal with automobiles, then there would be no reason to do this at all. However, our database may be more complex. So let's say we have a situation where we have boats and automobiles, both of which are conveyances. Now, why would you do something like this? <clears throat> well, suppose you know that in the long run of your, uh, in your design that you're going to need to have people owning conveyances. So you have owners of conveyances. Well, if you had every conveyance type be its own table, then you would have to set up separate relational tables for every type of conveyance. However, if you abstract out in your table structure the concept of the conveyance, Put the relationship in here. Notice here you've got a primary key and a foreign key relationship back to here. In the automobile, you've got the same situation going back to here. Okay, You only have to set up one relational table to the conveyance. And the conveyance itself can be any type of conveyance. And the details of what type of conveyance that you have can be tracked within the table structure itself by having the fields in the table structure to know what type of conveyance you've got. So what you really have is a parent-child parent relationship here. So <clears throat> now you have to um, manipulate this data. So suppose you want to have the ability to view just the automobiles or view just the boats. Um, what you would do to make, realizing that the, lot, that the actual physical structure is the parent-child relationship you saw in the previous slide, but now a logical structure that goes with this is allows you to create a view where you um, look at all the features that are associated with the automobile by joining the tables conveyance and automobile together and you have a view that is all the features of an automobile and now you can make a view vessel which has all the fe features that are of a vessel. So remember that you can take the physical structure of the tables but you can create a logical structure or a visual structure by creating views that look at just specifically automobiles or vessels. Okay, remember these are these. This should be a review of 
creating the pieces of these structures of, of how to put this together. So let's look a little bit deeper into the many-to-many -many relationship or the end-to-end -end relationship. So um, and how will we handle an end-to-end -end relationship? This is going to be very important to you in some of the designs that you'll be doing for this class. So in other words, we know that um, automobile can have drivers, passengers, owners, and all of those are people. So how do you handle the situation in the database where there's this many many relationship between automobiles or conveyances and people? Well, to do that, first we're going to create this abstracted concept of a party. And the reason we're going to create an abstracted concept of a party is because if you need in your database to have people-owned conveyances, you might also need to have companies own conveyances. Okay? Well, people have different attributes than companies do, but they both have the same capability as in relationship to conveyances. So what we do is we take a person and we create the same kind of relationship we did with conveyances and automobiles. We abstract out the concept of a party. Okay? And a party can be a person or some other entity that has the abilities to do the same things. And in this case, it would be owning or operating conveyances. We could go one step further um, with the good old concept of the conveyances because suppose your database needs to be even more complex such that you need to be able to have um, items that are basically anything that can be owned by a person. Okay, You may s abstract out even further the item. Now, I did this with in terms of a law enforcement database, so items could be either seized or forfeited. Okay, those are relation; those are the different properties that you have um, or fields that you have with those database tables. But the abstraction that a conveyance is a type of item, and that a vessel and an automobile are a type of conveyance, those relationships hold. And notice, I changed everything now to have an item ID as a primary key and I foreign keyed everything back to this concept of an item ID. So we've abstracted even further. The nice thing is, is because this is a collapsible relationship, when you're representing the relationship between items and other things within your database, you don't need to show that entire hierarchy there because the properties of an item are, are actually brought forward to all the different types of items that you might have. So you have those properties in everything. So now we need to relate items to parties. Okay. Well, that's pretty straightforward to do. You do this with a good old relational table. And a relational table says, OK, here's my party. Here's my item. I'm going to have a primary key that defines the relationship. Remember, this is a many-to-many -many relationship between properties and items. You have a foreign key going back to the party, and another foreign key going back to the item and any other types of properties that deal with the relationship. So in other words, like in here, you could have a party. This could be a person. Here's an item. It can be an automobile. And the relationship may be owner. And typically, you have some sort of coded field to go through all those different types of relationships, like drivers or owners or um, you know who holds the, the paperwork, all these different things that you can do. So we've got the relationship field, we can, which can have different things, owners, passengers, different types of parties, which are businesses, persons, persons and organizations. And that can now can be the owner or can have any type of relationship between the two. So we've done that. We've put that there. So um, when you look at this, <coughs> when you look at how these things fit here, we also want to know, probably want to know with the items, what is the item. So we're creating this field called type of. Okay. And we would typically put type of in the highest level table, basically the parent of all the tables. So in other words, when I say type of, uh, this would be a vessel, It'd be something of the low level, or an automobile. It would actually define up here what this is a type of. Now, the reality is you don't have to do this. Because if you have entries in this table with this item ID, and in this table with this item ID, and in this table with this item ID, you know that the thing is a conveyance. However, 
that requires you to write a piece of logic to see if there are entries in this table, which may or may not be um, easy to do. And in actually many cases, it's not necessarily easy to do. So you want to make this uh, pretty easy to find here to know what you actually have. So the type of is really good to put in that high level. Same thing with the party. And what is, what type of party is it? Is it a person? Is it an organization? Is it a company? Put that up here and the top adult, uh, or basically the, the, the parent table. So, how do you handle situations like master detail relationships? In other words, a very simple example of this is people having multiple names or people have, having multiple descriptions. And the way that you handle that is just simply a standard master detail table. Um, here you've got the person, okay, which has its party ID, okay, and remember this person can be abstracted all the way up to a party because parties can have names, okay. But you create this thing called a concept called a name, which you put into a table, okay, and the primary key of this will actually be a name ID, and you have a one-to-many relationship with a foreign key leading back to here. So now this person can have multiple names. This person, in the same way this foreign key leading back to here can have multiple descriptions. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, simple, straightforward design. So we can abstract things and typically in a database you try to abstract as much as possible because it makes the relationships less complex um, if you know that relationships between abstracted objects are going to be common. So for example, if your database had to deal with boats and cars and planes and people and organizations and companies, you wouldn't want to have to create a relationship between all three different types of parties and all three different types of objects because you'd end up with nine different relationships, tables that go on there. Okay? It's much easier to have party with, per, with part um, item and have one relationship table that defines the relationships between them. And that's why you do this level of abstraction. So we're going to go through another one. Um, location and address. Okay, An address is a type of location, but locations can be more specific. So a location could be an item. Okay, So we've got a little bit more complexity here because location could be an item but it may not be an item and you have to make those decisions not based on the sheer logic of does a location make sense as an item but do the fields that you have to track with locations do they abstract neatly with items and do the relationships associated with locations have the same types of relationships that you would see with items. In other words you use the information that you need in the design of your database to determine what level of abstraction you need to do. And we're going to make it a little bit more complex in this in our design because now we're going to add the concept of events. Okay, and I don't mean events as in programming events, but I mean things that you might have to attract that attract that occur in real time as, as things that actually happen um, in your database. So you may want to say, okay, well, we need to put in our database that this person had a wreck with this automobile at this time and this location. Okay, Not an uncommon thing that you might want to do with the database if you were trying to track things like an insurance database. This party had this conveyance which was involved in this type of event at this location at this time. Okay, Something that you would put into a database. And these are the things that you would have to be able to handle. And if you think about it, you know, in reality, when you think about, oh well, yeah, tracking a wreck, that can't be that hard. But to do in a database, but you know, for a database designer, there's a lot of different entities that are associated that you have to put into the database to handle that. You now have a location, you have a time, you have a party, and you have an item, and you've got all sorts of information about that item. So. What we have been able to do here, though, very neatly, is mimic, mimic object-oriented object structure within the relational database. And then using views to let you see the different things that you have um, to get you down to that level of detail to the low-level elements.